You know, one of the main things in the mid-sized companies, you walk into a room, HR, payroll, whatever you want to call it, and there's chalkboards and whiteboards and folders. And every time I see a folder or a chalkboard or a whiteboard, I'm like, there's a place for that in, yes. in this system. And that's kind of the buy-in that we want, is that mm -hmm. we have to break the old habit, but we have to also let the employees know that this is not an intimidating process. Yes. Because when upper management comes in and they want to call for something mm -hmm. and they need a report, Fumbling through folders is not yeah. an efficient way to get not that done. All. Now, some people might be used to it, and upper management might want that folder on their desk. That folder's still gonna be on their upper management's desk. Yes. But right. when they realize how much time they had to spend for that employee to pull that data mm -hmm. and manually enter it, that's when they really start to realize, wow, the systems are actually working, the software is actually working. Welcome everyone to the Cassandra Properties Podcast. So we have a real treat for you today, folks. We're joined by Joe DiCostanzo, who is the CEO and principal of DeCaro Consulting. And we have our trusted companion, right hand, <laughs> left hand, everything in between, Rebecca, joining us today. How are we doing, Bex? I'm good. Good. So we're going to jump in here in a minute, folks. But, um, you know, I started off by saying we have a real treat for you because we do. Joe has brought a whole different dimension, um, it's really several dimensions, of business consulting to multiple companies that we've been involved in, some companies that we own, and has really opened up an unbelievable amount of doors. Uh, you know, you like to think that you have a handle on things as you're running your business. You know, I've, I've been in the driver's seat here for 20 plus years, and we thought we had a pretty good handle on some solutions, but Joe has brought a whole nother world of, of solutions to the table that has really given us the opportunity to, to scale in a meaningful way. So, Joe, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you, James. And uh, it's been a pleasure doing all these projects with you and Rebecca as well, and I appreciate the time. Well, it's, it's been our, our treat. Absolutely. And uh, we're really excited to, to share with you uh, folks out there in the audience uh, some of the things that Joe has has presented to us in multiple businesses. Um, you know, Joe, typically, before we jump in, we like to just give a little context for the audience. They like to get an idea of, you know, who's this person on the other side of the mic, and, and we like to get into their, their background. So, you know, a lot of your solutions um, are technology-based, and, you know, as a kid, you grew up on Staten Island, right? Yes, that's correct. And went to uh, Wagner High School and grew up in uh, the Holland Village, New Springville area, Staten Island. Yeah, right down the block, so, yeah, it's a small island. <laughs> it gets smaller by the nanosecond. Absolutely. So, as a kid growing up, you know, were were you fascinated by technology? Is this something that's been kind of woven into the DNA, or? You know, it's it's kind of funny. It started really more from a finance and accounting background, and then it became more of an efficiency type of play where we were overwhelmed, and my background, just to bring it back a little bit. So after college, uh, I had an accounting degree and I started at a mid-sized firm. I think it was back in 1997. And um, I worked there for a you know, brief period of time and uh, passed the CPA exam and started doing all the accounting stuff. And then I realized that um, there were ways to make things more efficient. I mean, back then we used Lotus, uh, you know, and then it evolved wow. into Excel. And then after you started to use Excel so much, you said, wait, there has to be a better way. And now today they have these programs that manage everything and um, you get alerts and notifications and they yep. create workflows and there's, you know, artificial intelligence that's worked in. And that's kind of what always intrigued me is how to be more efficient and how to maximize the time and the hours that you put in. So was it, was I really like a tech guy? Absolutely not. But um I've learned that that's the way to get to that finish line in a, in a faster, more efficient format. So that's really where it evolved from. And it, was it, has it always been kind of second nature for you? Have you always been, you know, just good at technology and you quick study on that stuff? or? Yeah, I mean, definitely have a, a, a strong math background. So looking at those form formulas and using the logic, um, it, it kind of, you know, naturally came to me and, and fit very well. So I'm more on that side of the thinking rather than the, uh, the marketing or the creative side. So that's kind of where I. Yeah. Well, coming to, to know you the way I have uh, over the last few years, 
I, I see you as, you know, the Joe today, right? You're, I think at, at your core, you're a problem solver, right? So there is a creative piece there, though it's not creative in the traditional sense like Pete's creative, but you're a problem solver, right? You're someone that looks at things from many, many different angles and you're providing solutions. So I, I can't see you, though, as an accountant. How did that? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually shocked. I just I learned that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, actually. So that... Back then, there was there was uh, you know Albany had a great business school. It was a, you know a very renowned business school, and the accounting was the best program they had there. And at the time, you had advice from people, and they said you can get a great job in one of the big accounting firms. At the time, it was the big six. Um, I actually went to a mid-sized firm, and um, it was it was kind of the safe route. And then I remember at the accounting firm one day, one of the older partners in the firm, he said, "What are you doing here?" working and he's like you don't belong here he oh, goes wow. he goes this is not for you he goes wow. i see i see different a different path for you he goes don't get stuck here and about six months later they uh brought me in to tell me that they gave me the highest raise in the uh the whole class and i told them i quit <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh Fantastic. that's where it all started and then interesting i've been in business for myself ever since and there's been you know, the core business over the years was uh, credit card processing, which started back in 2001, 2002. And, you know, throughout that time, you know, we uh, had other businesses that we brought on board that would be very aligned with credit card processing, which would be, uh, you know, gateway and software companies and um, payroll companies as well. And as you learn these systems over the years and specialize in those systems for a period of time, it brings us to the point where we're at now, where you see how all these systems can mesh very nicely and integrate. And that's kind of where this evolution came from. Because you can go in to these places where these enterprise systems were so cumbersome and expensive yep. years ago. And now people can go in and get them for a subscription service. And it's very efficient. But the beauty of it is is that everybody wants to work together and play together. And that's the efficiencies and the optimizations we want to create by meshing all these systems together for medium-sized businesses. Um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of our, our core client that we uh, focus on. So uh, it's second nature to you, and, and uh, I, I just want to slow it down a little bit for the audience and maybe give a few examples, right? Yeah. You know, we can all remember back in the day when Apple, you know, didn't quite speak to... Um, Microsoft. And um, before that, there, there were platforms and systems where if you were tied into a particular system, uh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were kind of <laughs> stuck with yeah. the tools that that system offered and really not much beyond that. Um, and today, that is a completely almost gone entirely. There's these third party apps and there's these plugins for these bigger platforms that uh, Joe has, you know, kind of run the gamut on and seen which ones work best with which uh, systems. And you don't have that old kind of mindset of, well, I'm, I'm using this platform and, and that's it. I'm stuck in it. You know, you helped a lot, Rebecca, uh, years ago when you started here and you started to kind of look at the old, she's smirking, you know, <laughs> because the old kind of clunky systems that we had. Yeah. And you began to layer in uh, and opened my eyes to some different opportunities out there. And then when did we first start working with Joe? Uh, I think it was almost two years ago, right? I think. Yeah, I think 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And, Fall, maybe. And you saw very quickly the really slick things. One of the, yeah. the platforms in particular, I don't know if you want to talk about which platform it is or not, but one of the platforms he had brought to us for um, a mortgage company uh, mm -hmm. You had gone and sat with Joe, and Joe turned us on to, to specialists in it, and you came back, and you were like, oh, my God, <laughs> like, this is unbelievable, exciting. the opportunities that we have here. Yep. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> that was kind of the start of what has led to now with, with Joe's steady hand uh, guiding us through complete transformations in this company and other companies. I thought it might be fun for us to chat a little bit about a common client uh, that we have. And if you could talk a little bit, Joe, about this company does about uh, 20 million in sales a year. Yeah, that's about right. Right. Plus or minus. Um, how did you end up? Because because that predated me. How did you end up working with that company? First off? Oh, so um, we had a mutual friend mm -hmm. and um, I lived in Miami for about nine years and uh, moved back up to New Jersey. 
and uh, our mutual friend said, you know, this company that uh, my friend has, he goes, he um, kind of took over a company that had a lot of the uh, legacy employees yep. and a lot of old systems in mm, place. Yeah. And, and he goes, this is perfect for you. Because, as you mentioned before, I, I like to solve those problems. I mm-hmm. like the, when the puzzle pieces are all, you know, out on mm-hmm. the table and try to, try to figure it out. And it was, it was a great opportunity because right off the bat, we identified, you know, some, some, some immediate, immediate issues and, um, you know, kind of that, that low hanging fruit. And it was, it was just really ripe to pick. And, um, and, it, and it was ironic that it fell right into my wheelhouse, which was, which was billing. So you walk in there and this is very typical. You'll see three or four people in a billing department and um, people are, writing down uh, invoice numbers, writing down credit card numbers. I mean, besides not being compliant, um, it's just a completely inefficient inefficient right. process. Mm-hmm. So we were able to, and one of the first steps is to see currently what they're using. We don't, we're not in the business of replacing software and bringing in our proprietary software. We really want to try to work with what they have as long as it's hitting the cylinders that, that the business owner wants. So with that being said, we had a great relationship with their developer. We were able yep. to bring in a gateway, a billing gateway platform that, and it was, it was a layup because this is a recurring, a recurring payment model. And we went from four people in that billing department, okay, to practically one person that would just mm-hmm. be dealing with collections once a month right? rather than four full-time people doing billing every single day. So once we were able to collect all the data and put everybody into this gateway, they run on a recurring frequency, whatever you know their agreement says. Um, so once we did that, that was a tremendous improvement. And it was, it was great because you immediately saw, um, it was a breath of fresh air, people were able to breathe, and it, it immediately took that strain off right there. And then you can kind of go in there and prove other, other inefficiencies out, and then vet them out, and then see what's gonna work at that point in time. And, um, it could be a payroll system or an HR system, and then we just start to really take these silos and bring them together. So it, it's a great approach from, I think one of the challenges that businesses have is that everything is centralized. You know, if you remember the old servers and stuff like that, and, you know, and, the, and I'm sure we're going to talk more about the, the impacts of the pandemic, but this was a, a proven point from the pandemic when these people were so centralized within that office, yep. they had a very hard time to operate outside of the office. Yep. And the ones that started to decentralize, and they did this through SaaS software and cloud-based software, they had a real leg up. And fortunately for that client, we, um, yeah, we started in uh, early to mid-2019, so we had a good one-year run. So it helped tremendously. So it was really plug and play when, when you know, everything, everything went down, so. Yeah, and, and it was tip of the iceberg. One of the concerns that we had was continuity, right? Yeah. We were worried about, uh, well, you know, how was Joe going to be able to come in and take a department, as he had said, that had four people mm-hmm. uh, running these tasks uh, in a very manual way, uh, which is commonplace for, for a lot of us small to mid-sized businesses, right? right. This is just the way mm-hmm. we kind of learned and it's the way we've done things. And from an operation side, you were really concerned about continuity. What's going to happen here? You know, does a, a switch flip and then overnight there's a whole new set of processes and procedures. And that was not the case at all. We, we at barely all. felt the work that you had done as far as like a reset impact. It just literally, we were able to take those resources, reallocate three out of the four to do other things mm-hmm. that needed attention. Uh, but you, you, there wasn't that uh oh moment of we're gonna have six months of training and it's gonna yeah. be a long, you know, runway getting ready to switch over to this new system. Is that common in the work that you're doing? In, in that particular instance, and that, that's a great point too, when people have to do multiple jobs that are, you know, not within their job description and it's billing day or it's billing time, it causes stress because it's outside their wheelhouse and then er- er- errors happen yep. and mistakes and mistakes mm-hmm. are costly and that then are. and then upper management comes down on them and it creates it creates a bad work environment so to put the people in the position that they were intended to be 
placed in, which is what happened there, was tremendous. Yeah. But with billing, because it is so automated now, and that's where I have 19 years of experience, it, there really doesn't have to necessarily be a buy-in except from upper management to say, okay, yeah. we're ready for this transition. Absolutely. And just more of a transition of data collection, and then it runs automatically. But there are other software applications where there does need to be a buy-in, and, and the employees have to be on board for that type of training and everything else. Um, well, I think that, like, it was very interesting to see, like James said, it was a very seamless transition, and from an operations standpoint, you know, that's very important. But also, I, you know, I usually have my HR hat on as well, and to see that employees be able to make that transition without, you know, a, lo a lot of um, – concern and then to see the weight lifted off of them after and just be happier employees i just think is it's just it's great no, it's, it really is it's an amazing it's amazing to watch it unfold and i remember working with the hr yep. platform with you and you know one of the main things in the mid-sized companies you walk into a room hr payroll whatever you want to call it and there's chalkboards and whiteboards and yep. fol folders and every time i see a folder or a chalkboard or a whiteboard i'm like there's a place for that in, yes. in the system. And that's kind of the buy-in that we want, is that mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to break the old habit, but we have to also let the employees know that this is not an intimidating process. Yes. Because when upper management comes in and they want to call for something mm -hmm. and they need a report, fumbling through folders is yeah. not an efficient way to get not that done. All. Now, some people might be used to it, and upper management might want that, re that folder on their desk, but once they realize that there's a better way, that, that folder's still going to be on their upper management's desk or the report. Right. But when they realize how much time they had to spend for that employee to pull that data mm -hmm. and manually enter it, that's when they really start to realize, wow, the systems are actually working, the software is actually working. And you can then report to third-party vendors, workers' comp, or whoever else, insurance companies, depending Absolutely. on the type of business, wherever that's heavy. So you're, you're touching on, on something I wanted to, to move into next, and, and that is, you know, compliance. You men mentioned it earlier, and doing business, um, look, running a business anywhere is a challenge, right? But, but in New York City, um, compliance is, is top of mind for many of us. Yep. Uh, you know, the rules are changing frequently, um, and through technology, it, it seems that you have found solutions that not only keep you compliant and, and make it easily quantifiable that you're compliant, but uh, the, the question is from a, an adaptability perspective, as rules change and as these things evolve, like with HR and with payroll and with withholdings, how flexible are the systems? Well, that's, that's a great question. So there's not a one-size-fits-all um, in, in systems, and I think that's the – you know, the artwork of this and, and, and the beauty of it is that each industry is going to have its own nuances, its own rules, its own, its own sets. Um, it could be the restaurant industry. It could be an industry where there's transportation involved. Um, it could be a service versus a product. So it could be a retail application versus a restaurant application. And that's why you'll see that anything from POS software to different billing and gateway softwares or... We even have a, um, a software now that helps, and this is great for your industry, and the, it helps for rent collection. And there'll be specific nuances and specific needs that are tailored for that industry to create a great overall experience, right? So, like, let's just jump into property management, for example. And I know this is right in, inside your wheelhouse where your expertise is. Property managers always have this pain point of collecting rent, mm -hmm. right? So by automating and digitizing that process, we're increasing the cash flow for the property managers. But yep. we still want to incentivize the, the renters, okay, to go and use this platform. How do mm -hmm. we do that? Well, you know, I know in the mortgage industry, there was always this, uh, you know, if someone leaves their rented apartment, they want to go buy a house, they need a verification of rent. Yep. Okay, so as they're making payments every month, we're taking these payments and we're, we're reporting them to the credit bureaus. So it's giving them strong credit at that point in time. It's showing trade, trade, a trade line and it's showing good pay history. And just as a click of a button for a property manager, now that that person's paying on time, they can request that verification of rent 
right there through the system. So that's just one application where it takes so much strain off a property management company or a property owner. And then as we get feedback and we learn the needs of that property manager, depending on the size of the property, maybe they want the ability to um, have the tenant uh, take a picture of a leaky faucet or do something like that. And then we can go and syndicate that out to the repair people. So there's so mm -hmm. many things that we can do, but it's so specific to each industry. However, this is the dynamic part of the business that yep. keeps me so involved and interested is because every situation is different. But all the time, there's always ways that we can help improve and optimize. Well, sorry, James. No, go ahead. We worked on um, two separate companies, totally different um, looking at platforms and stuff. And I was blown away. And I know James said that in the beginning, but like the first one, okay, this is great. This is awesome. All the things you can do. But then when we got into the other company and suddenly we could tailor so much to that company, it was checking every single box that yeah. we had. And that's when it got really exciting. It's like, wow, you really can tailor this to anything that you're working with. And, and you had the tools for it and it was great. Right. And that's, and it's also important too. And it's a great point to understand who, you, what technology platform you're partnering up with. Because there's old legacy platforms mm -hmm. that have made their mark, have, the, have their market share, and they're in a specific industry, and they're not committed, they're not committing resources to further development. And that's something you have to look out for because yep. they're not gonna grow with the times. Mm. And the pandemic is a great example of how we all had to pivot and how we all had to move really fast. So there aren't other platforms out there. Um, you know, everyone's heard of Salesforce, but they're, they're a big monster. Uh, yep. You gotta be a large company, very large budget. Yep. But then there's these companies like Zoho that can pivot and move, you know, so mm -hmm. do you want that 18 wheeler that's gonna take a long time to make that right turn or do you wanna have a sports car? And that's really what you have to decide and break those needs down. But a lot of business owners are in the weeds and they can't see that far out in front of them. And that's what we really try to help with. So the, the transition, uh, you know, along the, the lines of what we're talking about, the transition from what was initially, you know, uh, receivables and payables exercise to streamline um, the accounting side of it, which to me made sense. Okay, there were some principles that, <clears throat> you know, no matter what industry you're in, there's some accounting principles we all follow. So mm -hmm. applying these technologies made sense. Like, okay, Joe has experienced, you know, 19 years in different uh, areas of this. Okay, he's going to bring some solutions for accounting. What, what really blew my mind was in an industry where your experience was not nearly uh, as extensive as the accounting side of it, the software solutions that you ended up suggesting and we ended up uh, proceeding with yep. covered the whole gamut. Uh, you know, uh, for an example, let's talk briefly about the whole intake process when the phone rings, right? From the time the phone rings to the customer being serviced and the marketing that goes along with it beyond that. If you could take a few minutes to just talk about how comprehensive these solutions are and how highly adaptable they are to different industries. Right, so <clears throat> where, where that all stemmed from was as we were building up the credit card processing company and the sales organization, I was intrigued about how many processes there were just on the sales side alone. And you know very well from managing sales agents and brokers and, and how many processes there are yeah. and, and how many things can hit the ground. So I would say going back to 2000 and somewhere around 2008, 2010, my partners at the time, I'm like, we need, we need our own CRM because mm. we're, we're, a lot of things have fallen to the ground and we're, and we're losing it. Um, yeah. And there's just so much quality stuff that we're just not staying on top of. And to create a CRM is no different than creating any hub and, sp any hub and spoke, right? Mm -hmm. So the hub is going to be that data. If someone goes out and meets somebody and gets a business card, that's important information. We put that in. We start yes. doing drip marketing campaigns. And then when that lead is nurtured, and I've learned the life cycle of the lead, right? So every business has their own life cycle when it comes to sales. Um, mutual client we worked on, that was a very short sales life yep. cycle. It was more of an order taking. But in your business and in my business, the sales cycle and yours much longer than mine. Yep. You know, a credit card processing account, 
um, could get approved in 24 hours. Um, uh, a real estate deal could take months, especially in certain environments. So it's very important to have different statuses, nurture those leads that become accounts, but also have the life cycle of that pipeline and being able to follow it all the way through. So in going through the detail and that comprehensive um, format of building that CRM out and working with the developers, I started to kind of understand that language, that development language, and learn the logic, and then learned how to apply it to my business. But then I realized that my business, although it had you know some nuances and it had some specifics, that there were sales organizations that were way more complicated than 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 ours. So it just be kind of came like layers. Yep. And when I would go into, let's just say, um, a client who was had a mortgage company or a real estate company, I realized the longer the sales cycle, the more statuses, the more yep. it has to be touched. And controlling those handoffs, um, there's always going to be manual intervention, and we're always trying to eliminate that. So every time there's a handoff point, we say to ourselves, how can we eliminate that, automate that, and create a workflow around it? And or a reminder or a notification. And that's where the success comes. But it's really breaking down that business and seeing where those handoffs are and where those where those crucial points in the business process are. And we learn to manage those crucial points. And if we can manage those crucial points and optimize them, that's where the success comes. So you, know, you covered a lot of ground there. And again, just to, to break it down for the audience to understand um, of the depth of, of the exercise you went through with this company. So uh, if we could just set the stage and talk about the, the conditions that were there when you first started to work with the company, right? If there was a situation where a salesperson picked up a business card or if the phone rang, mm -hmm. right? It was uh, maybe one outreach, if we were lucky, two, yeah. right? Trying yeah. to secure the business. If the phone rang, the number was literally jot down on a, on a pad. Mm -hmm. um, if the it's wild. The service wasn't rendered or the sale wasn't made. That was the end of it. If the sale was made, there was a series of forms that were scanned in and faxed. Um, signatures had to be countersigned and scanned back and sent yep. back into intake. At that point, they had to order for the actual service to be rendered. Uh, they would take sticky notes and put them up on yes. a board. Right? And, you know, we're, we're laughing about it now because, you know, but let's not forget the business was doing twenty million dollars a year in sales. Wild. So this was a system that worked um, because in the industry that's just the way they did it. Yep. Um, and and the solutions that came thereafter were remarkable. So continuing on, um, you know, the sticky note would go up on the board, mm -hmm. the service would be rendered, and a note would be made when that service would conclude, and then the CSR would pick up the phone and arrange for the service to be concluded. Yep. Where we are today is so dynamically different, mm -hmm. right? So where Joe basically brought it, and I don't mean to step on the narrative here, I just get excited about <laughs> it, right? So uh, now if a business card comes in or now if the phone rings, it's, it's implemented into a system, a platform that can be worked on uh, as easily in the office as it can be worked on on a beach somewhere, you know, in Antigua, right? It's, it's all based out of the cloud. And the the... The lead is processed or the call is processed. Everything is now done digitally where there's no scanning of any signatures. Everything was yeah. set up where you send it out. They click one button. Everything gets signed and, and sent back in. At that point, it automatically loads the service to be rendered, right? It yeah. notifies the individual parts in the company that render that service. Mm -hmm. It gets scheduled. Yeah. A text message goes <laughs> out to the customer. Yeah. That the service was confirmed, another text message goes out the day of when the action, the, I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit vague, right. but when the activity is occurring in that moment through geofencing, it's alerting the customer by a text message, hey, the service is on its way. Mm -hmm. And when the service is concluded, it's not, okay, thanks very much. Hopefully you call us in the future. Then it goes into a whole marketing campaign, fully automated. Survey, feedback, and, and it's, it's important. And it's everything. It, it, it really is. And just that, that, that great customer experience. Because, listen, there's always going to be issues in business. There's going to be delays. There's going to be different things. But 
I think communication is what puts people at, at, at bay. We all mm -hmm. we all been there we're waiting for a delivery and you get a window and yeah. they push that window. But now you see a lot of great companies that provide that link. You can track to see where yep. your delivery is, just like uh, if you're getting an Uber or a DoorDash or a delivery. Yep. So it's it's tremendous now. So now you're almost in a position where you have to have that technology in place because the other people are just going to sit there and you're going to get the customer service person. Mm -hmm. If they have a, if they're having a great day, you're going to have a great experience. But if they're having a bad day, that translates and that goes to the other side. And that's trying to what we're, what we really want to avoid is creating a, we want to have a great customer experience every single time or 99% of the time. Um, and that's by digitizing the process, it, it allows for that. It takes the strain off the customer service reps and they're, Everyone's on the same page, and I think that's the most important thing. Without a yeah. doubt. So um, I, I have to ask, when you, when you go into a company uh, like this, do you see it all off Jump Street? Like, do you have a vision of, oh, I know what I can do here? I mean, literally, literally, from the phone systems, everything has been transformed. And by the way, didn't have to break the bank. At a remarkably... Yeah efficient budget mm -hmm. uh, all of this transformation occurred so when you're walking in joe and you're engaging with the customer how soon do you see the the whole picture is it step by step it's, or i mean every scenario is different but in this particular scenario i didn't have to walk more than 10 feet into the place to to see it um so yeah it is that kind of experience where you walk from department to department and as i mentioned earlier I see those folders, I see those chalkboards, and I know that there's a need to digitize. And, and, and I just I always like to tell the, the client, don't, you can't get stressed or intimidated by this digit, digit, digitization <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, during that process to digitize because it's, um, it's, it may seem overwhelming, but as you start to take back, the, you, yes. get the, you get time. Right. And you get and you get visibility, and that's that's really the most important thing is is, is just the, the business owner being freed up, and talking about what you're saying that it didn't break the bank. We try to show a return right off the bat, um, and that could either be in you know some sort of human capital or mm -hmm. in a savings with a service, whether it's their payroll service or the credit card processing service, and you know we could talk about some of those uh, services as well, and. Um, I guess we'll get into that in a little while. But right off the bat, we're going to show a savings. Yep. And that automatically eases the business owner because now this is kind of you're kind of playing with house money to create the efficiencies. Mm -hmm. But once they start realizing the time that they capture back from this process, that's really where they start to feel good and then you, you know that we're moving in the right direction. Well, not only time, but the... Um just the amount of sales that you're getting, the right. increase. Because, sales increases. Yeah, because now that lead that they wrote down that didn't move forward is now being put into the CRM. And they're doing, like you said, drip campaigns and marketed to. And now all of a sudden, when that person is ready again, they're like, oh, I keep I keep hearing things from this client. And then they call. So there's there's two sides of the coin. Yep. And it, and it just keeps extending. So we always want to we, we, we're looking for the end-to-end, -end. we're looking to go full circle, and then we have um, also digital marketing assets that after mm -hmm. the post-sale. So there's pre-sale, which is that lead process, mm -hmm. there's the nurturing process, then there's the account and that implementation phase, whether it's a delivery of a product or a service, and then post-sale. And post-sale is just as important as well, where we can always increase their visibility to get them new deals that come in and new revenue. Yeah. And these softwares are amazing these days. We can do anything to the point where we can even extend that sign-up process or that payment process right to a website. It just, it just matters how far that the business owner wants to go and how far they want to take it. And we're always going to put them in a position where they're going to get a return on that investment. So talking about the, the business owner, um, let's uh, identify who's a candidate here. You know, can you talk through some real life scenarios of, of things folks may be experiencing in their business that, that may be a candidate? I mean, absolutely. This this client that we worked on together is an ideal candidate. You know, about I said about twenty million a year in, in, in revenue. Yep. And we can even let's let's take it down to the 
you know, we have the mom and pop merchants, and we can help, but sometimes you run into scenarios with the mom and pop merchants, it's a family business, mm -hmm. it's very close knit, and there's that control factor. Sure. And it, and it becomes difficult. Now, we can definitely save them money right off the bat, mm -hmm. but there are some processes that you would like to change. They just might not be willing to change. So if you take the mom and pop world, um, I'd like to start somewhere in the restaurant realm, mm -hmm. right? Because restaurants have a lot of a lot of processes, a, a ton of them. Yeah, so a ton. <laughs> and you go in there sometimes, and you see restaurants that are using um, just an old school credit card terminal, mm -hmm. and it blows my mind a little bit. If you think of that, you know, that diner scenario where mm -hmm. they have the little pin with the receipt, and they count them at the end of the night. Yes, I remember doing yeah. that. <laughs> People are still doing it. And wow. just that process alone, uh, people don't understand um, the power of a point of sale system in the restaurant mm -hmm. industry. So there's a project going on right now you're, you're familiar with. Um, it's a restaurant that we're um, in the process of opening up, and yep. we went super high tech on this. And it's uh, going to be in South Shore Commons. Yep. And the name of the restaurant is going to be Vitalia. Yep. And we went all out with the technology here. So we have it's gonna be great. Yeah. So there's a great bar and we have self serve kiosks. So that's line buster technology awesome. to make things again optimize and make more efficient. Mm -hmm. Take strain off the staff because they're gonna be Absolutely. serving meals. Yep. We have a marketplace that has two separate POSs with a way scale for all those. And then we took it a step further and we extended the marketplace to the website where people can go order marketplace items, mm -hmm. pick them up, and also we have fresh juices there, and they're going to be able to order their juices and pick those up as well. So it's so dynamic how we set this up, but all leveraged by technology right. that's managing this process. So if you looked back and said, this could have been done manually, sure it could mm -hmm. have been done manually, but it just wouldn't have been as smooth as it's going to be by, and you're able to add layers, and you're able to yeah. scale. And I think scale is very important. Um, I think a lot of business owners don't understand scale, mm -hmm. and some of them may never need, may never need scale, yep. and that's fine. Um, you have your mom and pop merchant that's you know doing great numbers, and it's good for them. Mm -hmm. Scale's not in their issue because scale may mean more space, more inventory, something right. that it's worked for generations, and they don't want to change it. But immediately when you hit that restaurant realm, scale is a necessity. So to answer your question, we start in that restaurant area and then we work our way up. So I would say business is north of $3 million a year in revenue. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the industry, and it starts to grow. Construction, um, it could be um, anything, manufacturing. Yep. There's a ton of different businesses out there, sales organizations. It could be real estate firms. It could be mortgage companies where there are processes. Um, and we, we go in there and we see what we can do to, to help. So it's so dynamic, folks. Um, the systems that uh, Joe's referencing, you know, that we kind of take for granted thinking that, well, this is just what this platform does. And, yeah. and that's the start and stop of it. You mm -hmm. touched on this earlier, but I wanted to expand on it a little bit. For me, I didn't see how uh, credit card servicing or merchant services had uh, any type of position of significance in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. And what I came to learn very quickly was how wrong I was. And because I wasn't educated to the latest and greatest in the products that I didn't understand how it could impact uh, from a mom and pop landlord like us, yep. right on up to to the the larger you know management companies out there. So mm -hmm. think about today for those of us out there that own real estate, right? If you have a a, a three family or you have a three hundred family, right? We all have kind of the traditional uh, process of going and collecting rent, um, and it's a, a very labor intensive. It's an arduous process. It's an uncomfortable process for both the landlord and the tenant, especially during difficult times. Uh, but, you know, Joe came in with an idea that I, I did, I couldn't even fathom it. And I'm pretty creative on the real estate side, You're Very creative, um, you know, and, and again, it applies to, I have a little building in Honesdale, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. right? Where we have yep. three apartments, uh, two offices, and a warehouse. Yep. So imagine instead of having to have the bookkeeper send out the invoices, make the calls, mm-hmm. see if the payments have been made, did the checks clear, setting them up on a platform where they're done through credit card, which is super simple, super easy, super streamlined. And for the tenants, Joe offers a service where, as he had had said earlier, I just wanted to explain what it means, you know, opening up trade lines for tenants that are looking for uh, the ability to go and buy a home or go buy a Uh piece of property that are trying to establish credit. He has the ability to open up trade lines where the tenant now is using the landlord as a, a trade line and the payments are made. They're made on time. They're done through yeah. the credit card back end and the tenants establishing credit um, from, from our perspective, almost all of the, the paperwork is gone. Absolutely. The invoices go digitally. Yep. The, we don't have to send them out by mail. We don't mm-hmm. have to do the follow up calls. You can deliver exactly. it literally in the most intimate device that we all have, which is our phone. Right. Yeah. All of the paper is gone. It's created a tremendous amount of uptime for the person that was handling the books for that transaction to handle other transactions. Yes. Now think about not a, a five or a six unit complex. Think about a 300, 400, 5,000 unit yeah. complex. Right. There's an incentive for the renter mm-hmm. and there's buy in and there's time savings. And it, as well as there is for the landlord. So it's a, a multifaceted, multi-pronged kind of approach that just opens the doors everywhere. Uh, and that was one little piece of on the merchant services side that I wasn't aware of. Can you spend a few minutes talking about that side of the business and some of the different programs that you offer? Absolutely. And you hit it right on the head. So every industry, there's always um, an issue or a, something we can solve, right, to, to help make that process better. So with rent collection and the uh, property management business, we knew that landlords needed to have an an accounting department, needed to send invoices. Um, How do we kind of bust this process up um, that's cemented in that everyone's so used to doing? And it was was really simple. Now, there's programs out there like QuickBooks that, Mm -hmm. that, that do this. Um, yeah. and they can send out a payment link. But in the property management world, sending out a payment link to an invoice is not as enticing as giving that win back to the, to, to the renters sure. and having a portal that's interactive to them. So there is a, uh, an aspect of, of creating behavior and putting, pushing people to this portal so they know this is the place to facilitate that rent payment. Mm-hmm. And by doing so, there has to be some sort of incentive. And that's kind of what it is. And we can also use it as a platform for communication and for service and support. As I mentioned earlier, if, if they call the property manager every time there's an issue, put the request in through the portal. Mm-hmm. And now in the, in the portal is your account. It's your accounting history of all your payments. It's your trade lines that are reporting on time. And it's every incident that you would have with a ticket that was opened, closed, and the time frame that it was resolved, who resolved it, and any pic- pictures that could be relevant. Um, so those are the customizations that we would do in that field. And now you have a property manager that's at ease. You have mm-hmm. all the auditing because people yep. are very quick to make complaints and say that they weren't resolved. Now you have a built-in auditing feature that says, I w- we, were, we were notified on Tuesday, the problem was resolved on Wednesday in a timely manner. And here's that whole it's amazing. Here's that audit right there. Mm-hmm. So it's a win win. It's a win win for everybody. It creates accountability and they get their, their payments. The beauty of it, Joe, was I didn't even know it was a problem. The way that we've been handling yeah. invoicing, we didn't even perceive it as a problem because it's just the way it's done, we thought. Right. right? It's just the way that that, that was the, the most eye opening thing of this for me was. It, I didn't think I needed help there. Like we recognized there were yeah. other areas we needed help in, but once you got your, your, you know, you established the relationship with us and you started looking at different places, you started to solve for things that I didn't even recognize were a problem. And again, from the tenant side, there's accountability through the portal yep. when there's an issue, right? They could take yes. a picture and post it. They're saving time. They don't have to wait mm-hmm. for somebody to come by and check what the issue is the first engagement. Mm -hmm. You could use your miles, by the way, that you're putting on your credit card to make the payments, right? You can establish trade lines. These are things that 
I didn't even recognize, Joe, I'm embarrassed to say it now, that it was an issue. I didn't even perceive that as a place where I could create an efficiency. Well, I don't think we knew that there was even that, at least I didn't even know that this option existed. It existed. Right. Candidly, I didn't. Yeah. I think, I think business owners, myself, everyone included, it's sometimes easier for us just to, if a tenant was to call, it's easier just to take care of the issue. Yep. Yeah. Right? Or, mm -hmm. or forward an email. And the hard part is, is, is training and creating a new behavior which ultimately brings the efficiency, which ultimately gives you the time back. And it also, and I know a lot of people experience this too, you start to, you own one property, two properties, and then people are afraid to take that next leap mm -hmm. into that third or fourth property mm -hmm. because they, again, don't understand scale. They're leaving on a Saturday when they're with their family fixing a, a sink or yep. a pipe, or, or not even if they're fixing it, they're still facilitating something in that process which bogs them down. When you have a system or a portal in place, it also creates a layer where it keeps yes. your tenants or your, your customers at an arm's length where there's no barriers that are being crossed, okay? And everyone can respect the time frames because there is Absolutely. accountability. Mm -hmm. So if it's just as simple, and again, I think it all comes down to communication. If a request is put in and, they, and there's an automatically uh, generated email that says, Here's your ticket number, one, two, three, mm -hmm. and it's going to be resolved or it's going to be responded to within the next 12 hours. People can now, they're at ease. So everything simmers down, everything calms down. The owners who are, you know, they're people too, right? We have to spend time with our families and our Absolutely. quality yeah. time is important. Mm -hmm. And everything gets resolved the right way. And, and if at that point a status can be notified and one of the, um, one of the um, handymen they'll get that notification. Mm -hmm. Now, we hold their feet to the fire that they're accountable to fix that job within a certain time frame, maybe eight hours on a weekday or 12 hours on a weekend or, or whatever it is. Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 took an, it took a step out for me because I was the one dealing with the tenants and then, call, like you said, calling the handyman and following up and making sure it was taken care of. And th that whole step is eliminated now because of the automation, and it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Right. You know, Joe, we, we, we say this a lot, right? As a, as a business owner, we're so busy, you know, pedaling the bike mm -hmm. and, and trying to fix it at the same time yeah. that the prospect of, of getting off to fix the bike uh, is just something that doesn't happen very often for us, right? So for me, it was uh, some of my hesitation was, okay, so now I, the, um, how much am I going to have to take out of my day to to bring Joe up to speed on the different things that are happening here and, and, and how kind of things work. And, and it would have been a disservice to me and you if I did do that, because again, I didn't even recognize the genesis of some of the issues. I didn't even recognize them as problems. And I think one of the, the things that we've all learned from the pandemic is we did get a little bit of time. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious, how has the pandemic uh, it's affected every business in every industry, right? And and what have you seen on the ground from your side with the pandemic? It's it's interesting. Um, in the beginning, the reaction was what we all expected. Um, some of concern, you know, panic, and even fear in some cases. But I have to say, um, many of the clients that we, we deal with, and, and of course, you know, there was funding by the government and it helped ease the pain and all that stuff. But it was who is gonna who is gonna come out of this, and who is gonna treat this as opportunity? And I have to say, this was probably one of the biggest opportunities that I've seen in small business in a very very long time. And and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. There were some businesses that may never recover. Yep. Um, but there are many businesses, and all business, there was this need to digitize. It's it's been there forever. And they weren't ready because, like you said, every day on the bike, pedal on the bike, they don't have time to get off. But now they had time to take a step back and see what others are seeing yeah. that, that are outside. Because you always get a better view from, you know, a, a few feet away. And I was so impressed that so many businesses were able to adopt and digitize so fast. You see companies like like Zoom and all these companies that during the pandemic, they just the stock prices went through the roof 
because these are the companies that people are going to have to rely on early on, but it creates a whole new opportunity, a whole new environment, a whole new structure for certain companies. You see Manhattan companies not going back into their space yep. r- right yeah. away. Yep. And they have people working from home. Mm-hmm. Typically, your structure was you have entry-level people, you have upper, upper management, and you have middle management. And middle management would be, you know, cracking the whip, so to speak, on these people, having mm-hmm. meetings, going to conference room, having their powwows, their breakout sessions, doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Where is that now? That's being managed by technology. So, so true. it's very easy. So now you take a middle manager who's making, you know, north of $150,000 a year. Now that can be replaced by um, the owner of that company taking a box with a router, a secured server, mm-hmm. and maybe maybe five ten thousand dollars in equipment. Have someone go there, hook it up, and they're logging into that portal, and mm-hmm. they're being managed through technology. So as we embrace this, and everyone knows now, sharing documents, accessing documents, collaboration tools. Um, they're just they're just easy now. Yes, they used to be very bulky, very mm-hmm. cumbersome, and it's just easy to collaborate. Um, Microsoft has great products. Zoho has great products, yep. and no one's asking anyone to come out and, and and be a guinea pig and try something new. Mm-hmm. These are proven products, right? And they're and they're not expensive at all. Um, but I think it's the awareness that people need to understand that these are the products that yeah. we should be using and how they change the game of business. That's very important. So, you know, as we emerge from the pandemic, and I've heard, you know, a fair share of folks who um, believe that this is going to roll back and things are going to return to the way they were. It, they're not. No. Technology is, is now, you know, in, in an even more dynamic way, integrated into everything that we're doing. Yeah. And, and the tools that are available and continue to evolve. It's just, you know, we get so caught up, again, in the day-to-day. Even here, you know, you had said something early on uh, when dealing with the other company about you, you need to keep your salespeople selling. Like, so what are all the things that your salespeople are mm-hmm. doing that doesn't involve them literally closing the sale? Because if, if as many of those things that we can pull out and get them out doing what they should be doing best, it's bottom-line revenue period. So for us, um, again, all inspired by some of those initial discussions and the work you did with, uh, with CapEx, we now are rebuilding the whole entire system here. You know, yeah. uh, again, because Joe, we just, mm-hmm. we knew the direction. We just needed for somebody outside to come in and to frame it yes. and to remind us that there are things that our salespeople were doing that they shouldn't be doing. Yep. And we are so excited for what we have coming in the fall. It's going to be Really, awesome. state of the art. It's going to give our agents every single advantage, which means it's yep. going to give our clients every single advantage. And for that, I, I can never thank you enough, Joe. How do people reach out? What's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Um, they can go on the uh, website. It's uh, www.dicaro.com, D I K A R O.com. And there's a uh, request information tab that goes right to us, and we'll get right back Perfect. to you. Well, folks, if you have the opportunity, uh, and if you don't have the opportunity, mm-hmm. create it. Reach out to Joe. Uh, he does amazing work, and, and he's really had a, a, a great impact on what we do here. Joe, thank you so much for the time today. Right, thank, thank you, guys. Always a pleasure. Everyone out there, as always, uh, really appreciate the support. Uh, this thing is really taking off, and we're having a, a blast doing it. So please keep it coming, the comments, the questions, the concerns, and everybody out there, as always, stay safe.